So hello everybody, my name is Joanna with EFI and welcome to our webinar today, The Six C's of Color Management. Uh, it's great to have you all with us today. And if you want to give us a quick hello on the chat, we're monitoring that, I have it here open on my screen. Um, so do give us a hello and say, where are you from? Are you from the US, UK, or maybe you're more international? Um, we're always very interested to see so I see here people from the US and yeah, it's great. It's great to have you all here. We have also international team. I'm speaking from Germany, but just before we start, I have a few things. We will be available to answer any question you may have. So please feel free to message us on the chat or Q&A. We'll make sure to get to your questions on the Q&A portion at the end of the session. This webinar is being recorded and you will receive access to resources, slides and recording with an email we will send in a couple of days. And with that, I would like to welcome our speakers of the day, Carrie Maloney, our Senior Product Marketing Manager and Rola Kampa, our Senior Product Line Manager. So Carrie, take it away. Thank you, Joanna. So hi, I'm Kerry Maloney. One of the speakers today, I'm based in the UK. I'm a product marketing manager for Fiery products, including Fiery products that are covering color. And I've been with EFI Fiery for 25 years and in the graphic arts and print industry, my entire career. And I'm still not bored of talking to people about why great color matters. So Roland. Thank you, Kerry. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I think we have participants from all over the world, which is really cool. Um, I'm Roland Kampa, Product Line Manager for Color in the Fire Division of, of EFI. Um, I personally look, I'm located in um, Ratingen, which is close to Düsseldorf in uh, Germany, um, along with colleagues from sales, marketing, QA and um, development. Um, yeah, a big welcome from my side. I hope that we can um, present an interesting concept to you um, today. And we want to start it immediately with a question to all of you, where, uh, which you hopefully can participate in. And uh, yeah, I'll hand it over to Kerry right away. Okay, so we're gonna say goodbye on the cameras for now, but you will see us again later for the Q&A at the end. Okay, so guys, uh, now you've got to know us a little bit, we'd like to get to know you. So we're going to take a quick poll. You'll soon see one question on your screen with five possible answers. The question is, what level of color management for print does your company perform on your digital presses? OK, so do you just use factory default profiles? So you just use the profiles as is, or do you use factory default profiles, but also recalibrate to those profiles? Or is it that you have custom profiles and custom calibrations? Or do you have custom profiles and calibrations plus you recalibrate and verify to those? Or are you not sure? That's OK, too. So and I know we have some partners on the webinar. So why don't you tell us what category your typical customer falls into? That would be great. OK, so the question is going to be on your screen for a minute. Um, and yeah, once you've made your selection, don't forget to click submit. Thank you. OK, so thanks for sharing that information. We'll take a look at the results later in the session. And again, welcome to this session on the six C's of color management. Don't panic. Don't log off. This isn't a geeky theory heavy webinar. It's a session on why good color matters to people who buy print and why good color might be more important than you think, plus why it might be easier than you think. So don't be put off by the number of steps. The number of steps doesn't equal the level of complexity. It's just a way of highlighting those important steps that are needed to get color right first time. And those steps, as mentioned, are the C's of color management. If you've been in the industry for a while, you'll have heard of the C's of color management, I expect. You can find many references online. I've included a few links here. And the C's aren't something that Roland and I invented to tell this story. They are, they've been around for a while. In fact, they've been around decades. And like most things, they've evolved. So we're first gonna talk about the classic six C's today. Plus, we're going to have uh, we're going to cover the sixth C too, 
which we feel is covered with fiery products and solutions. And with that, I'm going to hand you over to Roland. Thank you, Kelly. So, as promised, we will keep it um, number three. However, we would like to start with a um, couple of numbers, which um, I think are pretty interesting. They are coming from an um, industry research study. Um, and yeah, we just would like to go um, through this um, together with you. So, the first um, interesting data point is um, about color consistency and color matching. 94% of the print buyers regard color consistency across all print communication as critical. I think this is not really surprising, but it's a really strong number. 39% of the print buyers express that they want print providers to improve color consistency and offer better color matching. That was mentioned um, in 39% of the cases for both points individually. Whereas, and that is our first discrepancy that we need to highlight, only 20% of the print providers see the need to improve in the area of color quality and consistency. So it's 39% of the print buyers versus 20% of the print providers. There is a discrepancy. Um, this is not really matching together. Um, we see something similar in the area of print color standards, where 37 of the print buyers push towards print color standards, but only 18% of the print providers see the need to stick to print color standards. It's again a factor two in between these percentages, and there are multiple reasons um, for the discrepancies. So one is lack of time, you know, when it comes to realizing um, print color standards in your print shop or improving color consistency and offer better color matching. Another one could be the perception of color being too complicated. Some people do not know what to do and how to get started. And sometimes it's not clear on how all of these possibilities in the area of color fit together. And all of these are really reasons why we came up with this concept, um, hoping that it will um, help you folks. Another interesting um, data point is about high quality color printing. 37% of the print buyers have high quality um, color printing as their number one criteria for choosing a print service provider. So I think it's out of doubt that color is a very important topic. Um, it can differentiate you from the competition or it can also introduce some challenges. So it's definitely worth talking about it. And that's what we are trying to address with this concept. The first thing to keep in mind is that there are different types of print providers, or at least that is, you know, how we separate them in, in our mind. There is the first group of print providers who are fully aware of color management and they use it on a daily basis, realizing the benefit of it. Color management is our competitive advantage, could be a quote of that group, I guess. It's a small but very educated group. Um, and even in this group, um, People often miss out on the last two of the six C's of color management, control and conformance. We will talk about that later on. So even for them, I think there's something in the concept that could really make a difference. And then in the second group, um, this is a group of print providers working with print buyers that are absolutely not color demanding. Those providers are fine with what they have today and they don't really need anything more. Our print buyers are not color demanding, could be the quote here. It's a fairly large group and they typically stick to factory default settings and that is perfectly fine. They're not a target audience for the six C's of color management, typically, because what they have in place is just working well enough. And then there's the third category of print providers, which is um, a group um, that already realized that the print buyers demand better color and they react with something. Our print buyers want better color and we rely too much on color tweaking would be the quote here, I guess. So that's something that is used to react to that demand can be a gradation curve adjustment. It can be color management by eye or other actions that lead to lots of iterations, trial and error, and often subjective results, which then turn into print buyer dissatisfaction, loss of time, increased cost, loss of trust, and all of that is really dangerous. That is a very noticeable size group and the perfect audience for the concept of the six C's of color management because they 
need more than what they're doing today, but they might not yet realize that implementing solutions according to the six years of color management will make their life less complicated. And it will lead to much better results and a more happy print buyer, just to put things into context here. So let's talk about the concept itself of the six C's, what it is all um, about. Basically, before we look at the six C's, we need to start with the first five C's of color management. The first one is consistency. This one is driven by the printer, media, and toner ink quality itself. And the category to watch out for here is self-calibrating techniques. So when you choose your next printer, um, it's very important to talk to the printer manufacturer and get an idea about their capabilities in terms of self-calibrating techniques. We want to get the printer into a defined state before we do anything else. And there are multiple technologies out there that the various print manufacturers offer to help with that. So that is the fundament, the, the, the basics for anything else. Really. We then continue with the um, second C, calibration, which is getting the printer media ink toner combination into a predictable and maintainable, a targeted state. So we start with a defined state. And now we are you know, adjusting our ink limits, um, our toner limits, our gradation curves, and everything is put, uh, put into this targeted state that we want a certain printer to be in, which again is the prerequisite for the next C. The next C is characterization, where we create profiles. Um, typically, people think about that as covering color accuracy, but in reality, it really depends on the use case. It can span from color accuracy, ink saving, in some rare cases, toner saving, all the way to getting the most out of the printer gamut. And color accuracy is not maybe the highest goal, but you want to get the most out of it. You want some indoor outdoor advertisements that really have a huge pop and you want to boost color. So when it comes to the characterization um, of a printer and how you capture that in an ICC profile, in uh, in, a, in, a, in a characterization, there are multiple intents to do that. And yeah, being accurate is just one. It's the most common one, but there is more possibilities. The fourth C is conversion, where then one color space, a source color space typically, a reference is converted into another, typically the media profile that we created in the stage of characterization. And of course, when we convert spot colors, um, or brand colors into process colors. So it's very important that in this stage we have a digital front end that allows us to make the best use out of the characterization stage, the profile that we create, and then convert from a reference to the media in a very reliable way. And the last C um, of the five Cs of color management is control. And that is something that is very often overlooked, even in the area of print providers who are very advanced in color management. Because in the control C, we need to make sure that we have continuous verifications that check color quality over time and offer corrective actions that guarantee a stability over time with the goal to never leave the green zone. And I will tell you what the green zone is in a, in a later slide. So if you just create it, a calibration and a profile. I think everybody would agree that if we print, uh, print our jobs right now, the colors we would expect, they're going to be perfect, most likely. But nobody can really tell if the um, colors are still going to be perfect tomorrow. In a week from now, in a month from now, in six months from now, you know, there will be some environmental changes. The printer might change, condition uh, could change, um, and they will affect colors. So if you don't cover the fifth C, control, then you might miss out on that change, and then you're introducing uh, a challenge for your color management system. Or in other words, you have your color management really under control if you cons uh, consider all five of these Cs. They all play together. They all lead to each other. And if there's just one of the Cs that is out of control, sooner or later, you're going to face a challenge. Okay, so while Roland takes a breath, let's take a look at the results from the poll from earlier, Joanna. Okay, well, I took a sneaky look, Joanna. 
Yeah. And, uh, and it's great to see that uh, it looks like about 27% of you uh, seem to have their colour fully under control, which is, to be honest, a higher percentage than, than I thought. And we have um, quite a few of you um, using factory default profiles, but also calibrating to those as well. And we only had, I think it was 8%. Yes, we have it on screen now. So 8% of you aren't sure. And not being sure is fine, because I'm pretty sure that for all of you, profiling, calibration, and so on, isn't your primary role. Okay, and as a quick recap, Roland just spoke about the classic five C's of color management. So we have one C remaining. So before we move on, feel free to take a guess in the chat, an educated guess, unlike my examples on screen, as to what the sixth C is that Roland is about to tell you about. So if you want to post that in the chat, feel free if anybody wants to have a guess at what the sixth C is. We have a few coming in, I think. Yeah, I can see a bunch of guesses here. Yes. <laughs> okay, we have some I interesting like answers. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. I mean, at least on the, the answers I can see, I can't see a correct one yet, but you never know, Joanna, you may have been sent some privately. So, yeah, some uh, interesting answers in there. So, yeah, back to you, Roland, to share with us the sixth C. Right. Okay, let's continue. So, it's not coffee. Um, although that was a good guess. Um, no, it's actually conformance. And I, I think the, the color management purist among us would probably not see that as a step in um, color management. However, it's incredibly important. So imagine the scenario that you created a calibration and a profile, and you even have the control C under control because you are verifying um, on a regular base over time. That should lead that your color, uh, that should mean that your color is perfect at, at any time really. But there's one trap, and that is if your interpretation of a PDF is not correct, if you're missing that there are source profiles tagged to certain objects, if you're missing a transparency, if you're missing an overprint, if that is interpreted incorrectly, then you're not applying your wonderful calibration and profile in the right way, colors will be off and the print buyer is going to complain. So it is really PDF conformance. That is the sixth C of color management. It basically embraces these five Cs before, but it's basically as crucial um, as anything else. Yeah, and that is basically why it's the six Cs of uh, color management. So as I said, um, the circle is only complete if all of the Cs are taken care of. They all um, have uh, an important meaning. They all um, interact with each other. And um, yeah, you need all of them to be under control, to be on the safe side. That's, that's the easy message. And we believe on the fiery side that we have um, made it really easy to achieve them. So you could say, and I think Carrie mentioned that before, six Cs, that's quite a bit. It sounds complicated, but... Um, there is no direct correlation between the number of C's and really complexity, because the truth is that there are really easy and sometimes even very automated solutions for some of these C's. And we will go through a couple of examples here. So before I talk about how the six C's relate to fiery products, I want to point out that the concept of the six C's of color management is truly neutral. So we are going to give you some examples on how we handle the six C's and the world of fiery. But of course, the truth is that you will find solutions for these individual categories um, with other partners as well. You know, there will be competitive products um, that fit into these um, certain areas. So it's up to you to understand the concept and then to identify the product that really fits um, well into your workflow. So this is just, um, again, the relation to fiery products. It doesn't need to be a fiery product um, to work, of course. Keep that in mind. So consistency um, is driven by the printer. We said that already. So this is really a discussion that you should have with your printer manufacturer when you choose your next printer. Just go and challenge them um, and let them explain to you what they have in the area of consistency um, and how they can keep um, the printer into a, uh, in a defined state. That is really important because if the you know, if the conditions of the printer itself are somewhat shaky, 
then whatever you put on top of it in terms of calibration characterization is not going to be stable. So the printer should be able to keep itself in a stable condition. That is um, something you, you need to check with the printer manufacturer, and that's not a, um, a fiery question at all. In terms of calibration, um, this C is driven by fiery calibrator uh, in our um, product portfolio. For characterization, of course, it is fiery color profiler suite. Um, for conversion, it is the fiery digital front end, so either the fiery that you might know in the area of toner, high speed inkjet, but also a fiery XF or a fiery pro server in the inkjet world. And the control C is driven by EFI. Um, color guard, a cloud solution where verification schedules track color quality over time and where recalibration schedules, those are so to say the corrective actions. If something is failed, we want a recalibration to bring it back into the past state and the recalibration schedules guarantee stability over time with the goal to never leave the green zone. So we want our color to be stable over time. So let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail. Consistency, as we already said, driven by the printer. The thing you might um, want to watch out on top of having this conversation with your printer manufacturer is whether some or most um, of these self-calibrating techniques are actually supported by your calibration um, solution as well, which could be really handy. So some of the examples um, that I listed here about um, um, printer-specific pre-calibration techniques are auto-adjust gradation, auto-correct color mismatch, auto-image adjustment, shading corrections, or the printer manufacturer have somewhat similar techniques. They call them differently. Their automation level is different. Um, some of them are supported by inland measurement instruments, which of course is super effective and, and highly automated. Um, and they typically can all be executed on the printer itself, which is um, a good thing. But of course, it's even better if some of them um, can be supported by your calibration solution. So Fiery Calibrator, for instance, offers um, access, uh, access for some of these solutions in the calibration workflow, and you can just execute them as part of the calibration. They will typically be done um, first, and then we continue with the calibration. So keep that in eye. If it's an integrated solution in that area, that just makes things easier. In the second C um, of calibration, um, that one is driven by Fiery Calibrator. Um, and that is an application that you um, will find on any Fiery server. Um, it's fully integrated um, with Fiery Command Workstation, as well as with Fiery Color Profiler Suite. Um, it supports both the creation of new calibration for all of your media, or just for some, depending on how you, you know, want to get the most out of your media, or you just categorize them in groups. And it also supports recalibrations, which is super important because um, if you created a calibration and you're happy and some conditions um, change, you want um, the ability to go back to that state. And that's what a recalibration really is for. It supports both inline for highest automation, handheld and scanning measurement instruments. So basically anything that plays a role, I would say, in the market is supported by um, Fire Calibrator. And on selected engines, we even have support for gamut extending inks, um, you know, orange, green, violet, um, and speciality toners, fluorescent inks and toners, and white. And another important feature here is that um, we support G7 grayscale calibration. So that's also a criteria to look for, <clears throat> because if your calibration solution supports G7, it's really handy because then you don't need to rely on external tools, you don't need to import certain curve settings to reach a G7 grayscale condition. Um, so that's uh, a really good feature to have in your calibration um, solution. The third C is characterization, um, which is driven by our Fiery Color Profiler Suite product. And again, here it's a fully integrated color management solution for Fiery driven printers. And it's the only tool that can create profiles and configure color management directly on a Fiery digital front end. So the reason why I point out integration here is um, it has a couple of advantages. And that's something when you choose your profiling solution to really keep in mind. 
Um, it's so much easier to use color management if you have a bi-directional communication between your profiling solution and your DFE. It's less error prone because there is an efficient automation and an interface in between these applications. And it can also be really important in economical scenarios where you face a high um, operator turnover rate. Um, and without integration, the learning curve for new operators is getting crazy. So if these applications talk to each other, they can avoid so much uh, you know, trouble. They make it easier to use. They can avoid mistakes. Things are automatically installed. Um, and sometimes, you know, if you consider an offering that is not integrated, you just need to realize that it means that you have to export PDFs. You have to import PDFs on a DFE, then you have to print some of them with color management, others without color management. So there are a few, um, yeah, a few roadblocks you, that you might stumble into. And I would highly recommend to look for a solution that is integrated because you can just print and it will be printed correctly because there's the bi-directional combination. So th this is really something to, to look out for. Final Color Profiler Suite is an easy to use tool. Um, and although it's easy to use, it gets um, expert level results from all um, file driven technologies. That's actually another criteria to look out for. So Fiery Color Profiler Suite um, is driving cut sheet toner printers, but also white to super white inkjet printers and high speed inkjet printers. So you might stumble into a situation where you have multiple print technologies in your print shop. Maybe you don't have that, but if you do have that, make sure that your choice of color management solution can drive all of them because it's actually pretty tricky if you need to have one solution for inkjet. Think of textile, another one for cut sheet. If your profiling solution is capable of driving all of them, it just makes things much more easy. So it extends the Firebase server by um, uh, being able to create IC profiles, of course, inspect profiles, edit them. You have quality assurance in there as well, as well as output enhancement. As we said before, the characterization C is not just about being accurate. Sometimes that is all that matters. But sometimes you also have a job where you know you want to boost colors, you want um, to get the best possible pop uh, and have an attention seeking advertisement. And if your color management solution allows you to go into that direction, that's a big plus. Um, then it um, supports all um, industry leading inline handheld and scanning measurement instruments, the same way as Fiery Calibrator, of course. And um, inline measurement instruments, of course, nowadays are um, yeah, a hot topic because they allow us to automate tasks and they make everything much easier. So that's also a very interesting um, point to watch out when you choose um, your printer. If it has an inline measurement um, option, I think that's uh, a big plus. And of course, we keep a um, constant eye on Fogar and ID Alliance and um, similar organizations to support all the uh, color standards uh, and specifications that they come up with. On the fourth C, which is conversion, um, this is driven by the fiery um, digital front end, of course. Um, and as you can imagine, the DFE, of course, is more than just doing color conversion. So a really important criteria to look for <clears throat> is the Adobe PDF print engine, because we want to, I mean, the number one file format for print buyers is PDF. That is what they typically send in, and that is what we need to deal with. So you will want to have the um, official and latest Adobe PDF print engine for a correct interpretation um, of PDFs. But there are many more categories um, that are handled in a DFE. So there's spot color overprinting. There might be text and graphic enhancements if the job that you received isn't perfect and you need to work with it. Built-in spot color libraries is an important topic. Um, auto trapping, image smoothing, brand color reproduction so that we are really hitting um, the brand colors and make the print buyers happy. And of course, built-in standard compliance um, FOGA, validation print, contract proof, process standard digital, G7, grayscale, targeted, color space, all of these standards should be supported by your DFE. And these are all features yeah, to watch out for when you choose your DFE. So there's spot color control. I already said that in the context of a fiery DFE, there is um, fiery spot on, spot pro, and even true brand um, as a solution. True brand is a relatively 
new solution um, you might not have heard about yet. It's specially targeting the office market and helps you to translate very simple RGB defined spot colors, which are not really spot colors, into something that is an official name spot color. So it's a, a tool that allows you to translate a specific RGB combination into the um, device independent LAB value of a brand color and really helps you to get um, precise um, brand color reproduction even when the input side is um, a PDF that might just be made out of a PowerPoint, for instance. Then there's page element quality control, so pre-flight and post-flight, very important tools in a DFE. And there's image enhancement. Um, in the context of Fiery, there's Fiery Image View and Im uh, Image Enhanced Visual Editor. So sometimes we are in a situation where our color management is perfect, but maybe there was a mistake in the PDF. So it's also very good to have a tool where you can tweak colors in the last minute. Um, that shouldn't be necessary in a perfect color management world, but in the real world, sometimes tweaking images um, and jobs might be necessary. Okay, so uh, Roland spoke there about Fiery Image Viewer as an example of a Fiery color capability that's more than color conversion. And amongst other things, Image Viewer allows you to adjust color curves to get color right. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. That's why we provide such tools. But what we'd like to know in the chat now is how often do you do late color edits such as curve adjustments, color replacements, and so on? So reply as you wish in the chat or Q&A, um, or just give us a one word answer of never, occasionally, often, to give us an idea of how you, how you work with late edits. Okay, thank you for that. Keep those answers coming. We, we know what they're in answer to. So thanks for sharing with us again. And back to you, Roland. Thanks, Kerry. So we now arrived at the fifth C, which is um, control. And as I said before, this one is driven in the fiery world by EFI ColorGuard. Um, and you might not have heard about this tool yet. So I want to give you a little bit of an impression on the user experience um, and how this would work. So the basic ColorGuard interface, it's a cloud solution. So you basically control everything from a browser. Um, would be the shop summary. So you have a really high level summary on how your shop is doing. The individual printers can be registered here in ColorGuard. And you see an average Delta E and maximum Delta E, which represents the color quality of your print shop across all devices. You can see some extra information per device um, as well. And if you just started with ColorGuard, it gives you uh, a very easy interface to get started and then create a schedule um, per printer. When we go to the scheduling and we want to set up the schedule for a verification wizard, it's a matter of defining a name. Um, you define a printer, which again, I want to stress this. Um, this is about integration. So ColorGuard is going to find the fiery DFE in your network automatically. You can select it. Again, it's integrated. So we are communicating with the fiery DFE and I can actually select job properties. Um, which are stored on the Fiery DFE, and they are visible um, to ColorGuard. By selecting them, we know what you actually want um, to verify against. We know what kind of media is used in that job property, um, which are calibration. And now it's a question of choosing a verification preset. There are many, many predefined presets um, in ColorGuard, and um, they can also be fully customized. So once we set what we want to verify against, um, it's a question of setting up the schedule. You can do this on a daily basis. You can say every Monday, you know, before the week starts at 7 a.m., I want to have a verification on this printer. And there is a very flexible notification system. So you can maybe, you know, um, send an email to the operator to inform him or her that it's due, that you need to do the verification right now. Um, and you might add a manager that it only is getting informed by email if it failed, um, if you so like. So it's very flexible on how much you want to inform um, about this. And the notification um, portion is actually very important because our experience is that many customers, for instance, if they own Color Profiler Suite, they do have a verification solution, but it's really key to turn it into a verification schedule. 
if something at 7 a.m. on Monday reminds you to do it and you get a notification, that is a game changer. Because if you don't do that, you will just do it when you have time. And that is um, not going to work out eventually. Kalaga doesn't know, you know, if you're concerned about, I'm not sure if I can hit industry color standards. It's actually a very flexible verification solution. So you can create your own house standard. Um, you can verify it against the official industry standards, but you can also just check differences. If you don't care about industry standards, which might not be a good idea, but maybe you think that's not relevant for you, you can just do a device benchmark as well, and you will just see that the device changed, not in relation to a industry standard, but it is different than it was last time, which might be enough to know to just say, and now I'm doing a recalibration. You can also start with an industry color standard and you can change it. So for instance, it will display you what is behind a validation print or behind a G7 targeted. And you can then say, I want to activate or deactivate certain areas. I want to turn them from fail to warning. I want to change the limit. I want to make it a little bit easier. We don't allow you to overwrite the name then because nobody should pretend that it's still the industry standard, but you could use an industry standard modify it um, to your own needs and then use that as the standard in your print job. So it's, you know, whatever works for you can be set up here. And then at the end of a verification, um, by the way, recalibration schedules work in the same way as verification schedules. You see a, a history and trend. So it's basically um, measurement uh, points, or actually results, um, it's a passed or a failed, and then the average delta E um, as a function of time. And if you do that like at 7 a.m. every Monday, you can imagine that over time you get a trend. So you know how stable a certain printer is. And it might be less stable than um, another combination of printer and media. So there's actually a lot of information you can get out of this. If you're interested in a certain data point, you can just click it and it will bring up um, another web page. Um, it just opens a new tab with an online version of the tool that we otherwise call Fire You Verify in Color Profile Suite. So just another tab that gives you the information about the measurement data and why something passed and how well it passed or why something failed. And you might, for instance, see that everything was okay, but the paper white was um, off and then you have inserted the wrong media. So it gives you some way of figuring out what happened at that day. So to sum it all up, um, EFI ColorGuard schedules and automates um, the color verification and recalibration process for each fiber-driven print system. And it allows you to compare colors to either a custom reference or a house standard or an official industry standard to ensure print production um, stays consistent and accurate. It also allows you to monitor color verification results in real time because it's a cloud solution and you can act based on quality trends. And the interesting part is um, since it's a cloud solution, you can access the cloud um, as long as you have that account, of course, um, from anywhere. So you don't need to be in the print shop. For instance, if you are the manager responsible for this, you can use this on your phone or your tablet at home, you know, it's a cloud solution. All you need is the account, you, the URL, you see the details and you know how well your print job is behaving, um, even if you're not um, on site. Very cool. So let me explain to you what I meant with the green zone before. So this would be a, a typical or possible trend of verification results um, that we see in our print shop. Our goal, of course, would be to keep the results in what I highlighted here is the green zone over time. So as long as the average delta E, for instance, is within the green zone as you personally define it, everything is good. And what such a trend helps us to identify is when we leave the green zone. What does it mean? If you do not recognize that you left the green zone, if delta E's are suddenly increasing, maybe something in your print shop changed, temperature, humidity, you know, maybe the media accidentally changed, you want the possibility to identify that before you finish up the print product, send it all to the print buyer, and then you have this discussion why colors are not matching. And if you can imagine, if you do verifications on a manual base, just when you have time, then you might have a data point here, another one six weeks later, 
another one two weeks later. So it's really difficult to read a trend or to spot a mistake before it actually happens. And if you do it on a regular base, again, with the schedules and the notifications that ColorGuard provides, you will be able to see, I mean, you spot the red area here very quickly, you see something is wrong. And if you do such a verification before you print your job, you know, I need to do a recalibration before I proceed with these thousands of sheets that I'm going to print shortly, because color is not going to be right. So that's where the value of such a solution is. And that's why it's an important um, thing to have the control C covered. So color guard completes the five C's of color management um, by providing the control over time. It also has print analytics, history and trends, and reporting. You can export labels and PDFs. So if you want to be transparent and loud about the color quality, uh, when you talk to your um, print buyer, you can actually be very transparent and you can say, this is the result that I achieved for your job, you know, and they will see um, based on numbers that colors are right. Then we talked about the 6C conformance already. Um, that one is super important. Um, because um, there is a PDF conformance certification where EFI is teaming up with the Gantt Work Group, short GWG. And this certification guarantees the correct interpretation of PDF jobs. And we have made that very, very easy to achieve um, with Fiery Job Expert, which is a tool in the Fiery DFE. So the PDF conformance certification, um, besides the technical advantages, is also a very nice marketing tool for print service providers um, when they talk to new customers and want to acquire them and bind existing ones. Because if you do the certification, you will get a certificate, you will get a label, um, and your print shop name as well as the owner name will appear on an international Ghent Workgroup web page, which basically means that you can I mean you can show to your print buyers that you passed the certification. And that means that Whatever PDF you get from a customer, you can claim that you will honor their transparencies, their overprints, the source profiles, as they were defined in the PDF. So your customers are really in safe hands if you have such a certification. Um, I don't want to talk about prices here, obviously, but um, this is a very price attractive solution, by the way. I'd recommend um, checking this URL. You will probably be surprised on how price attractive this one is. I talked about the importance of the Adobe PDF print engine, if you remember that in the DFE section. If you look for a DFE that fits to your print shop, making sure that it's based on the Adobe PDF print engine is a really good idea. You just need to be um, aware that supporting the Adobe PDF print engine is not a guarantee for correct interpretation of PDFs because there's like millions of ways you can configure the Adobe PDF print engine. So that is why um, Fiery came up with a tool um, that we call Fiery Job Expert. What it does is it actually analyzes the PDF and it automatically sets all the print settings for you in the DFE that are required to process and interpret this PDF correctly. It is actually that easy. It's not even an exaggeration. Uh, exaggeration. So you need like two clicks to activate it, and then it will automatically be applied to any job that you import manually, that you import through hot folders, virtual printers, no matter how your jobs actually arrive in your DFE. That tool makes it incredibly easy um, to pass um, the certification. These are some examples on how the certificate and the label um, would look like that you receive. So you can put these ones in your email signatures. You can put them on the homepage. You can be very transparent about that. And as I said, um, the name of the print shop would also appear on an international web page. Um, so it's a, a great way of being transparent about um, your quality and gives your customers the assurance that um, you have color under control when it comes to the interpretation of PDFs, which according to the six C's of color management is like really, really important as the six C. Okay, thank you, Roland, for all that great information. Um, I'd like to do a quick sum up of what Roland just covered in the form of a checklist, actually. And by the way, we'll send you this checklist as a PDF in the follow up email you'll receive from us in the next few days. And remember, regardless of which digital press, DFE, 
the basics and the basic principles are the same, but we do have some tips for you here. So first of all, consistency. It's about the printer and it's a good idea to check what calibration and auto correction routines are available on your press. Check if the initiation of those is available within your calibration software, because this will really help streamline that important step. And a tip here is when you're choosing your next press, ask the question, what can this new engine do to look after its own color? OK, next up is calibration, and that's getting the press to a targeted state. So advice here would be take a look at how many calibrations you have in place. Is it sufficient to cover the different types of media you're using? And another tip here is if a media type or weight is different enough to show a visual color difference, then it warrants its own calibration. And then we have characterization, which is all about profiling. First, check if you have profile creation software, what features it has, and if those are sufficient to cover your profiling needs. And a tip here is not to underestimate the importance in terms of ease of use of color management software that's integrated with your digital front end. And next up, we have conversion, uh, which is about your digital front end or RIP, whatever you want to call it. So check that your DFE has the correct built in technology for both process and spot color handling, as well as a PDF engine that supports the latest standards. And a tip here is to remember that the DFE is more than just color conversion. It's about other things such as quality control. And if you understand those, you really will get the best out of your engine and so on. So and again, integration is for DFE has bi-directional communication to the profile creation software. Life gets a lot easier. OK, and then we have control, which is about keeping things in check. Your printers, consumables and environment will change over time. And as Control is one of the newest members of the C's family, I think perhaps the best advice here is to first get to know what Color Control software and how it can really help you understand your environment, as well as bring order with calibration and verification schedules. And another little tip here, Control software also allows you to prove color compliance to your customers as it tracks color over time. And that can be really useful to show the quality of your print business to your customers. And the last C, which is conformance, is all about printing PDFX files correctly. And the best advice here is to remember Roland's now famous quote, which is the best color management in the world isn't going to save you if you have a PDF element that is interpreted incorrectly and that that results in bad color. And a last tip on conformance is it's a good idea to certify all your DFE and press combinations to ensure the same quality assurance throughout your print shop. And as said, you will receive a copy of this checklist in the follow up email that we'll send on to you. OK, so just a quick reminder, if you do have questions, please place them in the chat or Q&A and we'll get to as many as we can live shortly. So I'm speeding up a little bit here to give us time for the live questions and answers at the end. So we're hoping from what you've seen and heard today, you're going to want to learn more. And we have some places that you can do that. We have a landing page on EFI.com where you can learn more about each of the C's. At the top, you'll see a video. If you want a quick refresher on the six C's or share with a colleague a little bit about what you learned today, that is a great place to start. And if you want to dig a bit deeper and start learning more, we have many free e-learning courses available on our 24 seven learning platform. The link there takes you to a page that's segmentized by the six C's. And we have many resources there from express videos through to full courses that talk about the six C's. And I just need to mention again that they are for free. And there's another place that you can learn more, which is EFI communities. So it's a communities location where you can post questions, find answers and chat with fiery and industry experts. So and as a reminder, when you receive this presentation in the follow up email, all these links are live. So you don't have to go looking for these things. You just need to click on the links. OK, so time for questions. So team, if you would like to put your cameras back on, that would be great. And we can start with the questions and answers. We did get many questions, so let's 
crack on. <laughs> um, so first question, I think Roland can help us with this. Um, is this something that Fari job expert would manage to perform some form of conformance? Yeah, the, <clears throat> the conformance is achieved um, by passing the um, criteria that is defined by the Ghent work group um, PDF certification. So it's a it's a very straightforward process. Um, you basically, um, if you sign up for the certification, you get a personalized test form that you need to print on your Fiery. And the, to answer the question, the Fiery job expert is um, configuring the settings of the DFE correctly, that the PDF is integrated correctly. You print it and you don't even need a measurement instrument. You don't need to send and print. So it's super straightforward. All you need is a proper quality picture of the um, printed test forms with your smartphone because they are designed in a way that the human eye can very easily see did you pass or not. Um, so Five Job Expert enables us to achieve the certification very easily. I want to um, point out that even if you're using a very old Fiery and you don't have a job expert yet, there is a, a guide on how to set that one up manually as well. It's not complicated. And the certification can be used in Fiery XF and Fiery Pro server context as well. I hope that uh, answered the question. Very good. Um, and we have a next question. I think maybe Carrie can help us. What regions and what print market were covered by these figures? I think he's talking about the NAPCO figures we showed in the beginning of the presentation. Okay, yes, I did see that question and I do know who it was from, so hi. Um, I don't have that answer right now, but I will get back to you. So I know NAPCO does cover more than North America, but this study could have been a bit more specific. So I will get back on that one. All right, so I have one more question here. Um, with all the great tools now available on a Fari DFE, example, a job expert, APPE, from time to time, the only way I can produce a quality print, I need to flatten the PDF in Photoshop. The file will not have any layers visible, but I can still flatten it. I assume this is due to do with transparency within the file. Are you able to advise and elaborate on this, please? I think maybe Roland or Doug I, uh, and everybody, uh, Doug, we have our colleague Doug Richards here with us today. He's uh, one of our great fiery experts. So hi, everyone. It really you know, does depend on how that file was put together. For the most part, a fiery will properly identify things like uh, transparencies over prints correctly. Um, it's not to say that, uh, you know, it's 100% uh, bulletproof, but one thing that uh, Roland mentioned is, you know, working towards making sure your files are somewhat uh, compliant with a, a standard like a, a PDFX uh, specification, for instance. That will go a long ways in making sure that you have kind of this um, uh, easy, easier time in, in printing things like your transparencies, your overprints, et cetera. But, but for the most part, you know, just out of the box, the Fiery does a, a good job with it. And you, and you may just need to um, go back and see, how, dig a little deeper in how that file is constructed. Okay, I have another question. How does Fiery work? for Linda Presses with seven colors, GMYK plus OGV. Is it possible to create extended gamut profiles? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have worked <clears throat> a lot in that area. So um, both in the calibration stage as well as in the profiling stage, um, we are able to create calibrations for CMYK plus gamut extending um, colors. And it's the same, I mean, it's also true for Profiling and we build lots of features around it. So not only can you create a CMYK plus X um, profile, but there are even optimization possibilities now. So if you want highest possible accuracy, uh, it even supports CMYK plus X output profiles in the newer versions of Fire Color Profiler Suite. So yeah, we invested um, actually lots of time and technology in the CMYK plus gamut extending area. Um, there are not that many machines out there, but it's definitely a trend that we see. So we want to be prepared for that. So I think we are in a, in a good spot for that. And certainly yes for Landa, yeah. All right, have another one. Uh, I work in the 
print and manufacturing industry, our customers tend to use the most economical paper stock available to them. These papers have historically not been compatible for, for use in ISO standard color management and tend to cause failures at the verification stage. This in turn means most commercial printers abandoned the process. Is there any change in this to the situation? Have standard changed to accept a wider array of uh, media? Yeah, that is <clears throat> that is a really great question. And of course, um, I think that is something, I mean, most of the standards have their origin in analog printing conditions. Um, and that is something I think that many of the digital printer users, you know, scared away a little bit. So it is a problem if I say, if I want to um, do my verification against a gray call or a PSO quoted version three, depending on whether you're in the Americas or in Europe, and then I have a certain LAB value, uh, I mean, a certain paper white that I need to hit. And of course, in production, we're using very different media. Uh, and as the, the um, the participant here said, um, some of them are cheaper, they might have tons of optical brightness, and there's like literally no way um, you can bring that to, uh, uh, you, you can match that uh, gray call specific or PSO coded media, right? that, that's not possible. So what can we do there? Actually, there's two ways we can do that. The international organizations reacted to that by um, introducing media relative checks. So there's G7, for instance, if you think about G7, grayscale and targeted, they are media relative. So they take a source um, like a gray call definition into consideration, but you do not need to have a media white that is matching. Media is going to be calculated relative. So it's very meaningful to have, ver have, to have a verification set up in uh, the world of G7, even if you have a cheap media, not a problem at all. And there were similar reactions from the FOGA organization by introducing FOGA PSD. There's a media relative version of FOGA PSD. So it's the same principle. You can use any media because the media wide of your media is going to be calculated relatively to the source. It sounds pretty complicated, but what it all comes to is um, the organizations have understood that you need to be able to work with any production media and they are in introducing verification techniques that support that. And these are supported in Color Profiler Suite and Color Guide as well. That is the official solution. There is an alternative solution to that that we invented in um, Color Guard and we call it device benchmark. So if you are not interested for whatever reason, and that might be one, in um, verifying your system against an industry standard, you could also say, I want to calibrate and profile my system and I want to take a snapshot. What it is right now is what it should be in future. And we call it device benchmark in Color Guard and we print a wedge and then we compare to what we measured before. So we can figure out that something changed, but we compare what we measure right now to what we found when you created the snapshot and we are completely ignoring industry standards. So some of the customers really like that approach. They're independent of industry standards and they can just figure out something changed, which typically is a bad sign because it will affect color. Then they recalibrate. So there is a possibility to verify even outside of the industry standards and even on really cheap media. That was a very long answer to the question, but I, <laughs> I hope I answered it. Yes, very good. We are at the top of the hour, but I would like to take three more questions. And if we didn't get to your questions, don't worry. I will, we will get back to you per email um, later. Um, and the one question that many people ask, how do I get Color Guard? Is it part of Comment Workstation? Okay, I can answer that one, give Roland a rest. Um, so it's not part of Command Workstation and you can take a look on EFI.com and find Color Guard there. And you can, first of all, take a look there's videos and so on that where you can learn more but there is also a free trial and there is also a live interactive site that you can also get to know color guard on as well so uh, it's a um, subscription product and yeah you can see a lot of information on efi.com and of course reach out to us if you want any additional information or anything specific and we will certainly have a, a link to it uh, in the in the um, pdf that we'll be sending to you in a couple of days so if you don't want to search for it, just wait for that file and 
we will make it yeah. easy for you. All right, thank you. So yes, yeah, so I have another one here. Years before we've we've seen scoring system for calibrator, which is telling us to check print engine or not according to measured delta, but the delta value recommended to a check the um, PE was always different. Can you clear this topic? What's the good practice for checking acceptable delta? I'll tell you what, I'll take that. So if this is a toner based fiery, in, in calibrator, um, in most systems, we're working with density. So we're not really so concerned with uh, with a delta E measurement. It's uh, in most systems, we display it as uh, a visual percentage. You know, how off is the measured from the target? And typically, if your measured is below target, if it's like 1% difference, you're not going to be able to really see that, especially in the shadow areas. So there, you know, we don't want you to panic. We just want you to go ahead and print and make money. If you start seeing a huge difference, you know, start seeing 5% difference, then it may be time to um, either run a service routine on your engine, uh, perhaps uh, call your service tech, have them take a look at your machine, or you know, just make sure that you're actually calibrating on the right paper. Because if, if it was a coded uh, calibration and you're printing on uncoded paper, that could also account for the difference there. So just, uh, it, it's, a, it's a visual check more so than a, than a Delta E variance. Yes, in this question, I, I also seen a few times, I have fire rips on my large format printers too. Uh, does it all work the same? Yeah, that's, um, that's a good question. Um, for the most area, the answer is yes. Um, so if you compare a fiery DFE driving a cut sheet um, to a fiery XF or a fiery pro server driving an inkjet solution, you're using the same fiery command workstation. That's basically your production um, user interface. It's the same. You're using the same um, color profiler suite. Um, this, uh, it's the same color management solution. And if you want to go for the um, PDF certification, it will be the same workflow as well. You don't have Fiery Job Expert and the Fiery XF solution, but there is a very easy way of setting it up as well. There's a workflow template, for instance. Um, there are some detail differences. For instance, we're still using color tools in Fiery XF versus Calibrator um, in the Inkjet world. And currently, at the moment, EFI Color Guard is not applicable to Fiery XF and Fiery Pro Server yet. That is something we really want to work on. But yeah, I would say there's more similarities than differences. Um, the overall workflow is very similar, which is important because we want to drive print shops with um, different technologies from Inkjet to Toner. That is very important for us. I think I'm going to ask a bonus question now. Um, I have a really old copy of Color Profiler Suite somewhere. Can I use it for step three? Right. In general, that is absolutely possible. Because, you know, in the characterization stage, um, Fiery Color Profiler Suite allows you to create the profiles. The truth is, of course, that we are constantly um, improving the product. So it's a really good idea to stay under SMSA. Or if you didn't do that for a while, there's a very price attractive upgrade that you can choose. So if you go for the latest technology or the latest version of the product, there will be multiple advantages. So, for instance, a while ago, we uh, exchanged the profiling engine, we introduced Fiery Edge, which is a very modern um, profiling engine with new capabilities, um, you know, ink saving, um, we can get the most out of the gamut, especially transitions are super smooth. So of course, as with any other software, even your phone, it's always a good idea to stay on the latest version. But in principle, if you're happy with the quality that you achieved with an older version, you can use the older version um, as well. Uh, I'm sorry that we, if you didn't get to your question, but don't worry, we're going to get back to you per email um, yeah. later. Yeah, I would like to thank you all for joining us today um, and thank uh, our presenters. They did a great job. And if you have time, we have a little questionnaire at the end. So please uh, let us know how we did and uh, so we can always improve our presentations for you. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you very much and have a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Bye.